Well, okay. <laughs> so what does that mean? So now we're live. So hopefully some people will start tuning in and we were talking, should, so we, the, re, should we reprise that sort of like conversation? Yeah, because now we just had seven people jump in. Oh, man. So, well, here. Hi. Hi to the seven people that are jumping in now. Greg and I have been talking. We were live without, uh, or we were live, live. Live with each other. We were, <laughs> we were live with each other. It's, it, again, we're not professionals. Not at this. Not, so. not yeah, there's... It's all good. So but, I'm hoping that the stuff that we recorded at the beginning will be there for the upload video. Um, but it, it might not. So if it's not, I'm going to actually run through some stuff that we talked through at the very beginning. And then we're going to rehash everything that Greg was just talking about. So thank you all for, for jumping in. But I wanted to make the announcement that the, the Marvel art of the Brothers Hildebrandt book is back in stock at spiderwebart.com you can see the link down there in the bottom left if you're on youtube keith just disappeared so he will continue on with the talk of the new book I'll give you a little bit. IDW's published this book on the Marvel art of the Brothers Hildebrandt, which is a, they did a beautiful job on the book, and Gene did a fantastic job. And we, we put it together over a long, long, long period of time. In any event, it's, uh, it's out now, and we have copies here for sale. And we sell them either unsigned, signed by me, or with a uh, remark drawn in the front pages with it's a black paper so i'll be drawing out with a you know a silver pen sort of like thing and so that that's available right now and here what we talked about doing this week was just kind of like drawing uh I, keith are you back i am back i talked about the book i gave the you know okay. gave the information Fantastic. i think it's just going to be one of those days man okay technology hopefully we'll have some smooth sailing uh from here on out but the other thing that we wanted to announce was that uh, the first ever Hildebrandt NFT drop just happened with the Ring of Gladriel from the 1976 Tolkien Lord of the Rings calendar that uh, you and your brother Tim did. That was published by Ballantine Books, used yeah. in the month of May. All right. Yeah. So with that NFT, the original painting is being sold. So whoever purchases that does get the original painting. Um, that is on portion.io. And just search for Hildebrandt. It's actually in the comic art section of Portion. So if anybody wants to go there and uh, check it out, uh, please do so. This is a uh, obviously a very rare opportunity to own a piece of Hildebrandt history, a piece of Lord of the Rings history, yada, yada, yada. All right. So, okay, here we are. So we got some people chiming in, saying hello. Hello, everyone. Hi, everybody. Greg, you were showing me well, we, this, yeah. fantastic, this you, fantastic page, right? Yeah, well, first, I mean, here, Keith and I talked about this, and he, I have these things that come to me, you know, I think all of us do, creative people, right? Thoughts, drawings, ideas, statements. And we've called that the brain dump. And what that looks like is this sort of like thing. That's, you know, that's a cutaway view of my head here. And you, you have this, this door opens in the, in, the, in the ceiling and all these ideas fall into this cardboard box, you know, like, you know over here. And that's where my ideas come from. So I just collect those, you know, they, they add up, they, they accumulate. Sometimes there's only one, sometimes it's empty. And you start to wonder what the hell. Because that door, it doesn't, you can't open it from, from this side. It opens on its own, you know, from from the top and and so I but I, I that leads to all kinds of drawings and at wild just things that have no what meaning so to speak you know what I'm saying they're not for a job or anything and I started that long ago on, on my drawing board between while I'm on a phone or I'm between drawing the picture I'm working on say that this came from the Lord of the Rings period 
and I had this sheet of paper. I've got several of these. Some of them are four times bigger than this. And they're just like like crazy whacked out little characters that have no bearing on anything. You know, here, what's he saying? You, you feel the pain? You know, <laughs> you, you're, you're, you're a psycho ceramic case. The guy responds to him. You know, and it's just <laughs> abstract crazy stuff. You know, squid fruit brown. Harry Crew knows brain felt. I don't Fletcher bearing gas. I mean, I, Archangel headspin. I have no idea. It's, it's just crazy stuff that, at, you know, phrases and drawings and ideas. And so I, I do them on my drawing board. Or I do them on these big pieces of paper, or I just sit and they'll come between a job like, like this, like Captain Tomato. He he's one that just sort of. He likes to to fly to people's faces and slosh all over the place, you know. And I, and I just, it isn't like I'm doing that for any purpose. It's just some crazy thing that jumps into your head. Or Captain Pickle, you know. There's so many, a lot of captains in the comics, right? Yeah. Captain <laughs> <laughs> or Or things like this. Dead Sea Trolls. The Dead Sea There's, Trolls. You know what I mean? I, I like, or things like this. Salvador Doilies. You know, that persistence of vision or Memory. time or what the hell it is from yep. his painting. Yep. Or, or Duck Savage, the Duck of Bronze. Or Bellboy Baggins. <laughs> <laughs> so the, these things, or you something should... so obvious as mistletoe. Come on. <laughs> or so something like so visual pun. A, a Rhodes Scholar. He's reading probably Jack Kerouac. You know, as he's walking along the road there. Or shanty claws. It's only a shanty, you know, shanty town. You know what I'm saying? This kind of poop. <laughs> or, I have fun with this. The Vampire State Building. Well, I like this one. This is, this is a good one. These are the Foundling Fathers. Meh, <laughs> meh. <laughs> But they're, they're, anyway, they, they, oh, I like the him. He's a glitch. This is like, what's a glitch? What does a glitch look like? So, you know, you, you draw a glitch. Now, now we know what a glitch looks like. Or here, this is at a hotel. We were at a show and I'm dueling in the hotel room. That's double your pleasure. That's from, of course, a Christmas <laughs> story. Yes. yes. <laughs> it's endless. I'll just keep this up all day, you know. How about Big Sur? Well, that's fantastic, man. That's great. So or how about Welcome to America? Can you see this one? Yes. <laughs> so all of these are just popping into your they're head. Just a, they're, they as, don't. As you're just going and doing yeah, it. Yeah. They just are there. They, they'll, they'll hit from that brain dump thing. You know, they just flop out. Yep. And I do it on down fast. I'll, I'll either write the idea down and or sketch it right away. And sometimes they're long stories. Sequential art kind of like stuff that I've done. Okay. That it just you just keep drawing it. It's like the way I think early animation was before Felix the Cat originally was drawn that way in the animated cartoons. It was like they called it the New York style, then there's the Hollywood style where you draw extreme drawings. Your your this action, then this action, so you know where you're headed when you do your your next drawing and your breakdowns. But in this kind of animation, they just drew forward, moving, not kind of like knowing where you're going to end up, sort of. And they had okay. that surreal quality. That's what this stuff is kind of like, you know. You don't really anyway, whatever. Right. And that's what you're going to do for us today. Well, I right? think I, I don't know. Maybe, you know, we're talking here. You know, I just like to fool around with these things. Oh. <laughs> Wait a minute. There's nutmeg. <laughs> and of course, transcendental vegetation. Keith That's did a, you did a rendering of this one, right? Yes, I did. I can't yep. see that. Can you see it? Uh, anyway, all right. Whatever. There we go. There we go. The transcendental it, it, it's like it, It's just like goofy. Is this getting tiring or what? I'm, I'm going to draw something. Don't worry about it. You know, 
I don't know. Do people think? Think? Everybody, are you enjoying seeing Greg's brain dump sketches right away? Yeah, do, do you want do, to do, get him right onto the uh, paper? What do you want? He's disappearing again. Hell's Kitten with a little uh, pitchfork. Keith, where are you? But anyway, this is a kind of like thing that, I, you know, it's like, while these have no particular meaning in a job that I'm working on, it, 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 I think pretty much almost everything that I do, I think we do as artists, starts that way anyway. It's like this, you're faced with a particular project or drawing or illustration you're doing either on your own, your own painting or, or for someone else. And you really are, it, and it's coming a lot from your subconscious, right? I think, you know, how do you start it? Where do you start? What's, what's, what's going on, you know? And so you're, it's just, you, you, I find that I just kind of like, I have to stare at the page and look at it and then sort of set the move a pencil around. And that kind of likes to start me on a path and that's what another aspect of what I, I do is I draw these very, these heads, these big pictures a lot of the times that have, again, no bearing on anything, but they're not like those ideas so much is that I'll start one like this and I'll just start drawing. Let me see. Let me see. So, so there's, there's the beginning of something. I don't know what the hell it is. It's an eye. Yeah, I, I went through a bunch of the heads, several of the head shots here. Here's one, Keith. I just did That's that. That's awesome. Oh, man. I've, I've never seen that one. That's fantastic. Yeah. You know, it's <laughs> like, <laughs> you kind of like get into your, I do anyway. Your, these guys are start, they, they start to talk to you in a way, you know, and the headshots have a real personality to them. Yeah, I think like, even though they're these outlandish characters. Yeah, they they all have a very unique personality. They're not just like a generic. That's the thing. I think when you, you, know? you it, it's too it's too easy when you're illustrating a lot of subjects, superheroes. Yeah. To, to fall into it, just a, in, 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 generally speaking, I mean, what, what do you do? It's, it's a, it's a, 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 a six, six and a half foot muscular guy or yes. girl. It, yep. And they generally always look the same. You can almost put almost, you know what I'm saying? And that's a danger, yep. I think, for me, a danger. I don't know what I mean. That you can just fall into just repeating the same damn thing over and over and over. These things help just to kind of like let your brain go nuts. And, and just yeah. like, oh, I like this guy. Yeah, with <laughs> <laughs> with all of them across the board, I feel like, again, as outlandish as they are, I could have a conversation with them. Yeah. Yeah. I can imagine I can imagine what they sound like. Yeah. You know, and then you got sometimes dialogue and it. I feel like shit a little off off coming up to the side somebody said you look like shit <laughs> maybe you should stop smoking you know yes <laughs> <laughs> oh here's this guy got excited because somebody wasn't taking him seriously i think that's what i ended up with thinking about him and he starts screaming at them who the hell you talk to me like i'm some goddamn graduate student <laughs> or you know <laughs> I, I like that it's I, very specifically a graduate student. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> but they're, they're just kind of... Oh, here. These are the oldest ones that I could find. I was digging out these things. Now, this was just a series. I just drew this face. He says, I need my transmission fixed. All right? <laughs> next, next hat. Your transmission? The next one. 
Duh, let me fix it, boss. <laughs> That's the last one. Here's the bill, Charlie. <laughs> yeah, man. Cool. You know, it, it, you just you get into that the, cast of characters exists somewhere. Yeah, they exist. I mean, it's it's fun as hell. I mean, this is like uh, uh, who the hell was it? The artist Disney hired way back. And put him in a room, and this is what he did. He just drew. Sometimes they throw some. He, I think he started way back with the with the uh, with Snow White before Snow White even, and they just okay, we're doing Snow White seven door draw, and he just started drawing stuff, and or they throw something else at him, or he would just sit and draw pictures all day long, and just whatever came out of his head, just wow. had no connection to anything. Which is that's genius, I think, to me. You know, yes, I mean, to let some, to yeah, have fantastic. somebody do that. You're not locking him into any kind of space. You just let him go nuts with what the hell he's doing, or she, or you yep. know, whoever. You know, yep, whoever. So, so Greg, as you're as you're drawing here, as you're sketching, I got to ask. Uh, you know, like, what kind of materials are you using? Is that a, a draftsman's pencil, <laughs> or? Well, I mean, it's a actually this one's a Dixon Ticonderoga number two soft. That I buy at the supermarket, and I like them because they got erasers. You know what yep. I'm saying? <laughs> Standard yellow number two. Where, where do you think? I don't even know. I, I can't, right now, my I'm I'm not in touch with my abstract mind right now. I can feel it. I'm thinking too hard because there's a camera on me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I get it. So normally this stuff you just do completely on your own in isolation, just oh yeah, doodling, right? Yeah. So what in this scenario, what would be best for you if uh, if I just remain quiet or if no, I no keep no talking no no you you you, or... you keep talking, entertain the audience, get up uh, on the table, and and do a. Uh, the dance or well, they can't see only you can see me they can't see me well they can't see you no i'm not i'm not down in the corner anymore so i'm just i'm just in what happened um, oh. well when i get kicked out I, I i come back in but uh gene has to press the button to actually put me onto the screen did she come over here and do so, that uh, she can but i can hear her on the phone back there so right now it's just you on the screen which i think is fine because I'm sure that everybody's wanting to see what comes out of your pencil right now as you're just you're doodling and drawing. Uh, I don't know. There's some obsession with drawing cigarettes and cigars. Cigar? Why do you think that is? I, probably because I like Groucho Marx. <laughs> okay. You know? Always with the cigar, yep. you know? I think. I think maybe that's probably the, the source of it. See. So everybody, as everybody's, uh, you know, you know, watching. If you have any, uh, you know, suggestions, questions, uh, ideas, anything that you want to pop out, please feel free to uh, write them in the comments box. Uh, who knows? You might actually alter and shift the direction of uh, Greg's imagination here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I got it. This is. This is. Drad Drigo, the ballroom dancer. <laughs> okay. That, that just. Nice. Now, you know what I'm saying? Yep. Sort of like a suave guy. You think? Yeah. You know, the, the, the pencil mustache. The little pencil mustache. Those were always, you know, it was always funny when you watch like a 30s movie. You know, you'd see them all. The main actor, the male lead, he had this pencil mustache. The second guy, the villain, come on, he had the pencil mustache. The cop would come in, he had the pencil mustache. He was, you know, the police officer. They all had pencil yep. mustaches. 
<laughs> but you never thought, well, no, that he shouldn't have that. He should have no mustache. Well, it should be a big bushy handlebar mustache or something. But the old pencil mustache, like like the Clark Gable thing, you know. Yeah. So as I'm as I'm watching him come to life here, you know, I I feel like he speaks with a a very heavy accent. Yeah. But it's but it's clearly fake. Very put on. Like he's a fake. He's a real makeout king, or he wants to be, or he thinks he is. He tries to be. He's a good dancer, and he knows how. You know, he knows how to come on to the ladies. You know. Yeah. U ultimately, though, he reveals himself as a freaking asshole that he is. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Elijah <laughs> wants to know: Did you and have with you and Tim? You know, you worked on all the paintings and stuff like that together. Did you ever pass doodles back and forth like this? Uh, yeah, I think while we're sketching on the board, yeah, because that like the big one I just showed, that huge thing, that would be at a time when we were working together. And I think Tim would add, or we would talk about it, or he would say, how about I throw this in? And it would escalate. It would just be like, <laughs> it would be like building a wall. You add yeah. one brick on top of another brick on top of another brick, that whole kind of like thing, you know? Which is really cool. Yeah, there's, not, there's nothing D like that actually. And then D out of, Dean out of, thirteen says that he feels like your guy should have a big open collar. Oh yeah, 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 definitely. Oh, with the gold <laughs> necklace. Oh shit! See, I don't leave room for that. Up, up, standing up though, right? Those guys yeah. always like to put their collar up in the back, you know. Yep. Yep. Anybody's got a hairy chest, right? So. <laughs> 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 See, this is like fun. I mean, you know, you could just kind of like. Does he have an earring? Or not? Would he have an earring? What do people think? Uh, Would he have an earring? Yeah, what, yeah, he definitely has an earring. What kind? It's like a gold stud, right? It, it would flash a lot. Uh, would it be a gold stud or would he have like a. Uh, like a diamond. A, kind of a, a diamond. Diamond. You know, it would That's flash. Slightly too, slightly too big. Oh, too big. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And it would flash a lot, you know. He yeah. likes to blind people with that. Let them know that he, he can afford that, you know. Yes, the bling. And, but, no, when Tim and I would do this, or even when I do this, now, alone, I'll start something like this as a joke. Just kidding around, and then it ends up as, oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. And boom, 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 you get into something that... that but it's like playing around as a kid, you know. You're, that's all you're doing with this, you're, you know. Yeah. Play acting as a kid, well, like putting on the your, your parents' clothes and acting around, yeah. and stuff comes out of that. Does he have a mole? Does he have a mole on his cheek? Right there. Yeah. <laughs> this is very shiny. This is like what, what do they used to call this here? Is it the Reese Buffon hairdo? Buffon with the uh, real cream. <laughs> real cream, a little dabble, do you? Brill cream, you'll look so debonair. Brill cream, the gals are all pursue you. Simply rub a little in your hair. So you could be a commercial for that, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so there's one. I mean, that's fast. Now, what I would do with this is... I have to go over with Prismacolor pencils. He, he, he wears eyeliner. Right? Of course he does. And purple. And, uh, we can't see them in the drawing, but he definitely wears white patent leather shoes. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Those white shoes are always, uh... yeah. Well, he's like, uh, what, what was it? Travolta in uh, Saturday Night Fever, right? That kind of, he could be that kind of yeah. like, all white kind of like guy, right? Yeah. Dean's wondering, does he have a, a, maybe a leftover lipstick mark Ooh. stuck on his collar? Well, yeah, he could do that. Yeah, let me see. Where the hell is it?
Well, he wears lipstick too. He likes to redden his lips. <laughs> yes, and tight pants. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy i know this is fun you know it's like this this you laugh with this kind of where's rouge you know he, he rouges oh yeah up, he rouges up his cheeks quite a bit right yep i think he's uh does he have green eyes oh that makes him exotic yeah <laughs> Well, I mean, like I say, a lot of times I would start to go over with a ballpoint pen and start to refine stuff. Because I think some of it, you get some hairs here too. He thinks he's suave, but you, you still get nose hair, right? Yep. <laughs> Does he have a five o'clock shadow? Is, he, is that like something that he would not? Probably not. Mm. I don't think so, right? Well, yeah, probably. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Nah, probably not. Yeah, I think he'd be clean. He's a, he's yeah. he, he's trying to make himself look pretty all day long. Yeah, he's always in the bathroom, you know, combing his hair. And, you know, so that that's the kind of shit I go through when I'm doing these characters. You're you're inventing the whole thing, and they become a real person. Yeah, and, and, I, and I got I got hundreds, I got thousands of these things. So you know, it's I always fantasize. Sometimes, not always. You, remember in The Shining, you know, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. When, when yes. she discovers his novel that he's been writing all this time. Somebody's going to find all this stuff and I'm dead. And they're going to start to peel through it all. Holy shit, this guy was... What the... <laughs> <laughs> are you, uh, you going to do his dance partner as well? Oh boy, that would be a good idea. That's, that's that, there. Yeah, what? What does she look like? What do you think she would look like? I don't know exactly, but she's he's clearly not pleased with who it is. <laughs> Wait a minute. I love those cartoonists, Mad Mag, Jack Davis. People, oh my God. Oh man, brilliant. Those brilliant. guys were, holy crap. Nice. I kind of like him. What did you say his name was? What's his name again? Rodrigo. Rodrigo. It's actually spelled Rod Rigo. <laughs> you pronounce it Rodrigo, you know, with the. Yes. You know? Yeah, very, very put on. Jean? What? You want to see the drawing here before Jane, I start? I'm on the phone. Oh, Jean's on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> is so she the answer okay, is no. no. Is, 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 <laughs> Is what? No, she doesn't want to see it before you go on. <laughs> Does anybody else have any ideas about this guy yet? Everybody, uh, yeah, it's tight pants, uh, metrosexual dude, dance partner, maybe in drag. Dude looks like a lady. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <No. clears throat> Lola, you know? But he's 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 not young. He's like, he's he's aging. You know? He's aging. Yeah. You know he's got wrinkles. He he thinks he he wants to be. Yeah, he's still going to the club, but he yeah. probably he probably aged out of the club a good five years ago. Yeah. You know, so everybody there is really too young for him, but he's still. He, hangs out yeah he th he still thinks he fits there he's gonna make it someday you know he peaked in high school he's that guy oh yeah no two ways about it yeah, he peaked <laughs> in high school <laughs> I, I remember guys like that not this kind of guy the guys in high school like that 
who were the makeout kings, you know. Yep. And the handsome and all the girls wanted them. I remember this one guy. I won't say names, but I remember that uh, he was like the, the you know the chief makeout king, good walker, you know, all that kind of stuff. Sports, you know, captain of the football. Yep. You know? And uh, and and I saw him, and he was always that. There was that arrogance, you know. And I don't want to get into the whole story because that was not really the most pleasant four years of my life, you know, in high school. But I saw them. I came back. I, I mean, going back to Michigan, and I saw him once in, in Rochester, Michigan, where you know I lived near and went to high school there, near there. He about eight years, seven years, eight years later, there he was on the street pushing the baby carriage with his wife who was pregnant. He had four kids. He was completely bald now, and he had this beautiful hair. That he'd spend a lot of time in the boys' room, you know, getting the collar just right and everything. <laughs> and there he was. And I, I don't think he had some, you know, job not really that great. And, you know, that, that it was really kind of sad. You know? <laughs> I don't know where the fuck that came from. Excuse my English. <laughs> but anyway, what the girlfriend, what she looked like, is she round is she thin is she good looking is she no no she's not well she wants to be like him she is wants she to be of... he wants her to be but unfortunately she just isn't she's she's not she's never gonna be you know maybe she's the same way you know maybe she peaked in high school too yeah. <laughs> and she's still trying to hold on to that Former glory. Glory and glamour. And she's just, but she's just, uh, that's her, her personal style is maybe 10 to 15 years too old now. <laughs> <laughs> Do you see your heads? Okay, see now, um, no she probably has a pretty deep smoker's voice <laughs> She sounds, you know, like, sound like Harvey Keitel, or not Harvey Keitel, uh, yeah, Harvey I know. Firestein. Harvey Firestein. <laughs> yeah. You're talking like this, you know. <laughs> but does she have a small nose or a big nose? I don't know about shape, just size. Oh, yeah, I don't know. See, that's the thing. You get to the nose, and now I'm erasing. Generally speaking, I don't like the erase on these things because it's like, yeah. I'm thinking too hard right now. You see, I can feel it. Yeah, you gotta let it go. I'll, 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 I'll stop uh, giving hints. You just let it go and you tell us. However, Howard says maybe a small nose and huge teeth. <laughs> huge teeth. That's good. Yeah, now we're we're actually going out of the realm of you drawing what is in your head, to right. us throwing out pitch ideas, and uh, yeah, it might get all draw, screwed up. Drawing on the fly. Does she have good teeth? Smoker's teeth. Well, we'll see how this. I don't know how this is going to end up. We're going to try it though. I don't, I don't know. Wait a minute. I don't think she's ending up as strong as she could. So let me see. Maybe, maybe push too soon. Maybe huh? push too soon. Too hard too soon. Should have just let you go a little bit. Well, that's a good lesson to learn.
This is not all that hot. It's not. It's not. Something isn't right. Okay, I stop myself here. I can feel it. Yes. Well, yeah. You know what? You know, as I'm as we're doing this, we started saying, "Well, what does she look like? She looks like this. She's doing this." Rather than just letting your brain, yeah, <clears throat> and your subconscious tell us what the character looks like, right? I think she's put on weight, definitely. You know, I think. Yeah, this is the okay. The first one was the brain dump. This one is trying to open the brain dump door from the other side. Right, right. Mm -hmm. it, it, she's looking too good to me. Come on. Uh, see, this is this isn't quite right. There's a. It's 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 looking too. Too non, too plain, too, too boring. Too straightforward. Yeah, too too. Now, with that, with that being the case, is this something that you would just you're going to continue? Just working at, See, that's or would you thing. come to a point and be like, "Ah, you know what? This isn't working. Flip the page." Yeah, uh, it's somebody else. It's not. It's not his partner. I don't know who the hell it is. Somebody. You know? Yeah. She smokes too. Smoking. That's a good prop to use. Cigarettes. And, you know. Smoking is it's an interesting thing is that, you know, like 20 years ago, a lot of people smoked. We did. 50 years ago, everybody smoked. Well, I mean, the commercials, go look at old magazines and you'll see Rock Hudson laying back with a cigarette. Rock Hudson taking a break and smoking Chesterfield or whatever the hell ever the cigarette was, you know? Well, yeah, I mean, I've seen ads, old ads where a guy was dressed up as a doctor saying you know like nine out of ten doctors recommend lucky strikes oh yeah it, it, it another another pitch for one cigarette could have been i don't know what the hell one it was this cigarette is made by tobacco men not medicine men you know <laughs> uh, it, it's eh. i mean it's something but it ain't great. your end is still good though you're what <laughs> I said your eh is still good. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it isn't. Well, all right. So let's. You know, these kind. These are so far gone as to not be confused by conscious thought. Yes. Too much conscious thought wipes them out. So you just got to not give a damn. Or not even. They're not, yeah, yeah, that's the thing. I think once we got, we drew, he came to us, Rodrigo came to us. I didn't know what the hell he was going to be. Then he became that. Now we're trying to come up with a, another character that's going to fit into that storyline. Okay, you know what? Let's abandon that storyline. Yeah. Or it if it yeah. comes to you, it comes to you. It comes. But in the meantime, just do something else. I always start with an eye, I think. I don't know why. It's the gateway to the soul, man. Yeah. Uh, Oh, the picture's going to be too small. I don't know. Can you see it? I can see just uh, not all of it. Not like a good uh, Rodrigo. That's way too small. Yeah, you got to go a little bigger. Yeah. 
So as Greg's drawing, we're gonna. I'll just chime in. Does any, any if anybody has anything? Uh, <laughs> as Howard Larson says Rod did like his girl for her smile, and her name is Cassandra. <laughs> Cassandra. If anybody, if anybody has any other questions for Greg's, uh, Greg, uh, anything at all, please feel free to chime in. Um, Also, if anybody has any suggestions of what they would like to see Greg do in in the future, or if they any subjects they would like us to talk yeah. about, something got in the future, something got weakened in me. I'm I'm, I'm not going to try to kill it. Let's go back to Drog. He was a success for the evening. <laughs> Sometimes it just doesn't happen. Fair. You know, Fair you, well, I think it, it's right now being too sub self conscious conflicts with that whole unconscious subconscious thing you have to let that yes. be the dominant factor in, you know in which is the struggle because you're obviously in a conscious state doing it very conscious of every move you're making and yet you're relying on that subconscious thing to be guiding you and when it it's not there or when the conscious is too much in power it destroys it yes that makes sense to me i get it i think that also i'm going to take this conversation a little off to the side and you can let me know your thoughts but that battling of the conscious mind and the unconscious mind when coming up with an idea when people start thinking too much and it's there's a that battle happens that's what i think when people start developing what they call artist block yeah Absolutely. Well, I can't think of anything to draw. I can't think of anything to draw. I don't know what to do. Exactly. And writers, too. Writers block, artists block. Same thing. And I remember reading a book. I forgot who the hell it was. It was a great book. I forgot the title of it. But I remember the admonition in the book and what the... She was a female writer, screenplay writer, I believe. She said, get up in the morning and write. No, no, no. You're sitting there with a pencil. Oh, I don't know what to write. Oh, write that. I don't know what to write. Write what the hell is ever on your mind don't stop to, to dissect it don't stop to analyze it don't stop to stop to criticize it don't try to make sense of it. just start to write what the hell is ever in your head you know what i'm saying and i think that's what yeah. this is about too don't artist block just start drawing a picture make a circle put some dots on it do, do some scribble on a page and try to find something in the scribble right yeah. just just yep. just start making moves and marks and and words, writers, and just start doing it. Gradually, it just, the log jam gets unjammed. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that. I think, that, was it Edison that would go and lay down, you know, and do that? Let go, lay, when he was trying to, ideas, just let them come to him? And I know, well, well uh, Tesla, his, you know, <laughs> he, saw the incomplete vision before he would write down or draw down the plans for any machine or object that he was working on. He com It completely formed in his mind. And he would always kind of like, I suppose, criticize the people who had to keep trying it over and over and over and over. You know, don't, don't try don't try finding a filament, what, how many, 1,000, 200, 3,000 times. You wait, you yeah. let it come to you, and then there it is. Yeah. And I, and I think that it's both ways, but you know, I'm not saying one, one right or wrong or anything. I just I find that curious, interesting reading about those two guys. But I think that in, in ideas too, you kind of like, you can't, you can't work at it. You can't, I mean, you shouldn't, talking about that, try too hard to force it to come out. Just leave it alone and let it come to you kind of thing. Just sort of let it come yeah. to you. I I mean I, you can't can't say how to do that, but I think you know it, it can you can work on that, but be aware of the fact that don't force yourself to try to come up with something, you know. And of course, if you're a yes. professional artist yep. and you got a deadline and you got to get the thing in tomorrow morning, well, that's a whole other story. That, yes, <laughs> and but that but that's where that that is the point where technical ability will take over. 
Right. You rely on, on all your past knowledge and information that you've gathered. Yes. Where it's like, no matter what, I know that I could draw this in this scenario right. of whether it's creatively coming to me or not. This is the thing that I have to draw. And do it. And you're able to accomplish it. Right. And, you know? it, and whatever it turns out to be, that's what it turns out to be. That's what it is. Good, bad, or indifferent. Yeah. Yeah, and so I'm going to, uh, Elijah was asking about the unexpected party. I think in one of our earlier podcasts, podcast live streams, we talked about the Tolkien stuff, right? And we talked about all the Tolkien paintings and that whole scenario. And I think. In one of the earlier ones, like number two or three or four yeah. around there. Um, what about it? What's so it Elijah, what? if you want to know more about it. The Unexpected Party is one of his favorite paintings of yours. Uh, do you re remember anything about making it? And he realizes it was a long time ago. But do you Yeah, I mean, the it? first thing is what the procedure is, is you read the scene in the book and you start to draw sketches. And I knew it was going to be a centerfold, so it was going to be a big, wide picture. And the idea is they're all trying to talk Bilbo into, you know, into the journey. Yeah into the yeah. quest, into the business, you know, they're trying to get him. And so I positioned him right there in front of the fireplace. I, I knew I was going to do that. So he's the focal point. I think if I remember right, our horizon line, you know, where you're looking at the scene from is right across his yeah. eye. You're at his high eye level. So you're with yep. him. You're with him, not with Gandalf, not with any of the dwarfs. You're with the Hobbit. So you're, you're relating to him on his eye level. And he's got that look in his, his, I think the vanishing point is his eyeball, if I remember right. If you just take all the floorboards and do all the lines, they, they head towards his eye. That's a sub unconscious use of, a conscious use yeah. to pull people's attention yeah. to points in the picture that you want them to look at. And they don't know that, that you're doing that to them. Yeah. So yeah. that, so the layout's all set up in real rough sketches. Get, I get models pose them all in the poses that I wanted and the lighting Tim and I did shoot all the pictures do another final drawing all rendered up very detailed the, 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 we, we would render those pictures all up to get all the values to show it mainly to show it to the publisher to, to really let them know what they're going to get as close as you could do it and what I'll make on a color comp and then paint it so we painted it and then Tim and I painted that together. You know, he sat on one side of the palette. I sat on the other side. We both paint together. And I got the whole, I remember this about the painting. We painted the whole damn thing and there was no smoke in the room. Painted the entire <laughs> picture. They had pipes and everything, but there was no smoke in the room. And I said, we're looking, I'm looking at it. One day. I said, there's no smoke. We got to put smoke in there. So what we did, we spent four or five days washing on <laughs> I mean what water you know I if I remember right strangely you kept what do you wash on smoke well it should be that yellowy brown color and you'd smear you put a little bit in the corner oh my god it's dull looking but if I remember correctly what we ended up doing was using cadmium red light squeezed out straight out of the tube watered all down like a very watery watercolor and washing it on the scene Hmm. Cadmium red light over it, really building it up, and then maybe we put on top of that something. But it, all that smoke is all washed on over a whole painted, solid-looking, darker-valued background. That's what I remember mainly about that painting. The oh. I'll, I'm going to add to your unexpected party story, uh, and to mention that you know when you guys drew these things, you. You drew them on tracing paper, or tra what you know, whatever kind of see-through yeah. bond paper that was. It was tracing paper. Two sides. Yeah. And back when, when I was in school and first met you guys, me and Kevin were there. Yeah. And our job, it, the, the 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 original drawing for that was all folded up. <laughs> and so Kevin, it, Gene gave Kevin and I the job of unfolding tracing paper from the 1970s yep <laughs> like, carefully oh my god because oh. it's old it gets old and brittle and, and brittle yes but tape on it 
Well, let me you see. Tim and I never. We talked about this aspect of it back then. We never drew any of the layouts for any uh, illustration or anything we were working on with any idea that it was supposed to be permanent. Like yeah. that, you would sell this later. There was no thought about yeah. that. It was like it was a means to an end. Once you got to the painting, that's the end. All that stuff's useless. And in fact, I had all those things squeezed up in a pile in a corner in my studio. And I had not met Jean yet. And she came over with her brother because her brother was starting to think about working together with her. And she he wanted to work with us. And, and I'd known Joe, her brother, for a number of years already. And he brought his sister over. And she saw this pile of crumpled up paper. And she says, what's that? I said, ah, it's all junk, Lord of the Rings stuff that we did. And, you know, we're going to throw it away. So she went over to it, started to um, crumple it, started to flatten it all out, rolled it all out, picture after picture after picture after picture, rolled them all up, saved them, took them home. I said, you, she, I said I'm throw, she, can I take these? She says, yeah, I'm going to throw them out. Take she put them in storage until you guys saw them. <laughs> yeah. They were in storage for 20 years, 20-something years. I would forgotten yeah. all about them. And Jean pulls them out. She goes to the storage and gets them and shows them to me. I say, what the hell is this? Because my, my memory was that they were all thrown away. Yeah. You know? And I see them all. Yeah. So, you know, we'd run to them all up and then throw them away. Which is kind of crazy. I don't do that anymore. <laughs> yeah. I mean, because they're not your average sketch. No, no. I mean, they are beautifully, fully rendered yeah. drawings. They are gorgeous. I, you know, the thing is, we did it mainly or partly because we wanted to show the, you know, Valentine. And also for Tim and me, too, because we wanted to make sure that we got what we were after in terms of value and, and everything. Yeah. And even though we had been professionals for what? I don't know, since 1958. And that was 19... 75 so for quite a while somebody 677 quite a while we were still we needed to for ourselves to take the drawings to that level yeah gotcha and now i don't need any more than this or i need way less than this to, to paint a picture from you know I yeah. just you, yeah. i get the basic i get the composition and the drawing the structure of things sketch in some mountains <laughs> And that's it. And then it goes to the canvas now. Paint. And yeah, then you paint do most, of your, most of your drawing in the paint, right? Yeah, ma mainly you're drawing the, in the painting, which is the key thing, yeah. too, is the, to make sure you're maintaining your drawing through the painting. Because you, you know how that goes. You can lose drawing like crazy Quick. while you paint. You lose the drawing. Yes. You know? And then it, it, it becomes a nightmare. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, that, that's the thing about, you know, we didn't ever put any value on that stuff. Nobody did. Few people did. Some people did. But the majority of people didn't. Like, you, you, you yeah. know, publishers, they would throw all that stuff away. I can remember, I think you could buy a, a, a full page, eighth page of Prince Valiant, Hal Foster's Prince Valiant, those magnificent pages, yep. huge, new, for a buck if you sent it to King Features. Wow. You know, because wow. they would throw all that stuff away. Most publishers did. You go to, a, I remember going to the ad agencies and, and working on some job for a movie poster, and they opened their drawers up, and there's all this stuff slid in there, scratched all up. There was uh, James Bama paintings for, I think it was a picture of Paul Newman for a film in Bama when he was doing illustration, commercial illustration before he went out west. And it's all laid in a drawer, all scratched. Like, you know, it was, nobody gave a damn about it. Yeah. It, it's uh, yeah. When I, I was in school, High Iceman brought in a stack of Hal Foster pages, Prince Valiant, uh, Alex Raymond, uh, Flash Gordon pages, yeah, and a bunch of other stuff. And he climbed in a dumpster and rescued it all. You know, it was pitched into a dumpster and he rescued it. Can you imagine? <laughs> oh. <laughs> It, it, it's oh my god well look at animation too right they just threw all the stuff in the dip like in the roger rabbit right that's what the, yeah they were taking out of disney and throwing it in that vat with all that stuff the chemicals just to destroy it all just to destroy it yeah well i think to keep a certain amount of it so they could value that 
So you don't flood yeah, the market, yeah, I guess, yeah. was the concept. It was all economics or some damn thing. I mean, yep. that's criminal. As an artist, it is. Me, that's criminal. <laughs> it is. It is. All right, man. It is five o'clock. Well, so work. anyway, we ended up with Mr. Rodrigo. Rodrigo. The ballroom Put on dancer. An accent, suave ballroom dancer. Well, then he would. He shouldn't have a cigar, should he? He should have. A, of course, he, nah. He should. He yeah. Should. Yeah, but when he goes out to try to impress people, what? He, it's a it's a cigarette holder, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. You know. And of course, what you draw him the white, the collar, the the chest, the hair, all the gold, and a lot of rings, and uh, a lot of jewelry. A lot of jewelry. <laughs> hey man, thanks. Fun. Thanks it's about having fun. Me. I mean, what the hell? That, that's what even you approach the most mundane job. I still try to have fun on it. When they say mundane, you know, it, it's like yeah. you still got to try to find some fun in this. Yeah, that's what it's. And man, you know what? It, that's kind of what it's all about. If you can't, if we don't have fun, I don't know who the hell can. <laughs> exactly. And if you can't draw a Rodrigo and enjoy your life a little bit it's right it's all pointless dude. it if is you can't pointless. it's pointless <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> we are in a all very right. fortunate Stop. position right you you yes. and i people like Absolutely. us are in a very fortunate position to be doing this kind of stuff and people like it and you like it and you make your living off of it it's it's like i'm, yep. I'm thankful eternally thankful for fans for everybody that likes what i do you know <laughs> all right man so again i'm gonna cap this off with saying uh the marvel art of the brothers hildebrandt's back in stock at spiderwebart.com and please be sure to make your way over to portion.io to check out the ring of gladriel nft drop uh so that's very exciting news man that you guys had put that out there into the world and, and that's all Jean's doing. All, all Jean's, Jean's doing. doing. <laughs> I think she's still on the phone over there. She's still doing she's business. Doing. <laughs> all right. Oh, she's coming. Well, there she is. All right. So good night, Greg. Good night, Keith. Thanks again. See you good next night. week. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Bye, Talk everyone. To you yep.